Hello, welcome to the Thursday, January 24th, 2019 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. It looks like I just can't let go of DNS. Uh, the Department of Homeland Security has issued an emergency directive uh, today requesting that uh, government agencies are double checking their DNS settings. Now, this sounds along the lines of something that I talked about a couple of weeks ago. I mentioned that there was an attack in the Middle East where DNS settings for domains were altered and as a result, users were redirected to malicious sites. So what DHS is warning about actually sounds quite similar. They're talking about credentials to DNS administrative consoles being compromised and then used to modify DNS settings, in particular for the mail server and of course the name server. Like I mentioned back then, that's something you should definitely pay attention to and something you should have some monitoring in place in order to detect if anybody is tampering with your domains. The tricky part to detect often is if someone added a new host name. That can often be used for phishing, like someone adding login.mydomain.com in order to then use this in a more targeted phishing attack. Now, one of the more challenging aspects often of firewalling is to properly restrict outbound traffic from clients. And this hasn't gotten easier, of course, with everybody moving to cloud services and cloud services not necessarily using a fixed set of IP addresses. So a lot of organizations are whitelisting certain domains. Well, it turns out that uh, this may not be the safest thing to do. In particular, in the Microsoft Azure case, uh, there are ways for normal customers of Microsoft Azure to get host names within the Azure Edge.net and the blob.core.windows.net domains and using them for arbitrary content. So if you whitelist these particular subdomains, you may inadvertently opening up yourself uh, to a whole set of sites uh, that are not actual Microsoft sites and their content could potentially be malicious. So for example, if you're using Skype, uh, Skype uh, really doesn't deal well with a lot of middle boxes inspecting traffic. So often you see exceptions uh, for in order to make Skype work that whitelist all of Asia edge.net and do not inspect any traffic going to hosts within that domain, which of course then opens a pretty good leak uh, for data exfiltration. But if you do heavily rely on cloud service, in particular webmail services and the like, it tends to be quite difficult to come up with meaningful data leakage protection controls. Now, if you don't want to rely on domain names, Microsoft does publish a list of net blocks that certain Microsoft services are using. It isn't clear whether or not these IP addresses are exclusively used by Microsoft or if some of them are also used for user content. And over the last couple of years, if you wanted tech support, in particular from ISPs and the like, uh, one quick way to accomplish this is, well, to contact them via Twitter and often you get better support than calling the helpline. Well, it looks like the tech support scammers have caught up to that and are now responding to requests like this instead of the legitimate ISP or service provider. Blogger Wade Wilson has an interesting post with one of these scams that he experienced himself recently. He tried to contact Virgin Media via Twitter and immediately got a response back by a lookalike account using the same Virgin logo and using Virgin Media as a name. The Twitter handle was Virgin CS Media, so really just two extra letters, so customer support or whatever you want to translate this CS to. Luckily, he didn't fall for it, but instead was able to string the scammers along and even obtain their IP address by tricking them on clicking onto a link. 
Twitter has shut down this particular account for now, but of course there will be more. If you see any of them, well, report them to Twitter, but also drop us a note and let us know if you ran into a scam like this. Well, uh, this is it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.